I'm building an action roguelike called Sundercore. Recently, I decided I need to put all my development focus into making a playable demo. First, to get the game in the hands of the public for some valuable feedback, and second, to have something substantial to put up on a Steam page. Because apparently, you need like 10,000 wishlists to have the smallest chance of success when you launch. And although a full game release might be a while away, apparently, it's a good idea to start accumulating wishlists even a year or two from release. But we got a lot of work to do to get this game demo ready, so strap in and enjoy the show. As far along as Sundercore might seem, it's still lacking very basic features. One of those features is saving data between rooms. So when you're fighting through a level, you'd expect to only have to clear a room of enemies once, but that actually wasn't the case for the longest time. Every time you entered a room, it would just regenerate the room as specified by the layout. So it wouldn't save if you beat all the enemies in a room, and it also wouldn't save any important items left behind. So things like artifacts, consumables, as well as any other destructible objects in the room, wouldn't be saved if they were created or destroyed outside of the room layout's specification. So first things first, we gotta tackle saving if a room is cleared or not. So you enter a room, get locked in, then beat all the enemies. The game should save in some variable that the room with this ID is cleared and will no longer spawn enemies when you enter it. The next, more challenging system to program should save certain important objects in the room so that when you leave and re-enter, those objects should be where you last saw them. These important objects are things like artifacts, chests, drops. Even knowing which destructible objects have been destroyed in the room is important for continuity. The specific details for objects also need to be saved. Things like knowing whether or not a chest has been opened and what artifact is in the chest, what the rarity of an artifact is. These are important details needed to accurately respawn an object. So how would you go about doing that in code? So the system I've created first checks for any of the important objects and then compresses all the important identifiers about that object into a little coded string. All these strings for all the objects are then added into one string stored in a section of the room lookup array. This array holds the important information for each room in the level, so things like the room ID, layout, position in the map, and connecting rooms. Basically everything needed to generate the room, including whether or not it's been cleared. So now it has a little extra slot for saved object data. The second part of this system decodes this string into the objects when you enter a room. I don't know if this is an unorthodox way of programming this kind of system, because I didn't do any research. So if you have any insight into other ways this type of thing is usually done, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. Also, we got a whole lot of people unsubscribed watching these devlogs, so get on that, hit that bell, give the video a like while you're at it. Alright, back to development. So when you clear a room, there's a chance for a reward drop. A reward drop can be a keycard, an armor piece, or a health o pill. The drop rates for each of these are influenced by the player's luck stat. So the way I've implemented this, when you defeat the last enemy in a room, the chance for a reward is calculated. The percentage chance for each reward drop is dictated by an array of numbers. So let's say the array has 100 entries, 0 representing no reward given, and 1, 2, 3 representing the keys, armor, and HP drops given. Each of these drops takes up a number of entries in the array. When the reward is calculated upon clearing a room, a random number from 0 to 99 is generated. The value at this index of the array is then checked to see what reward is dropped. So let's say the player picks up an artifact that increases the chance for keycard drops. Well, this would just mean replacing more zeros in the array with the number corresponding to keys, which would be 1. Now, where does the player's look stat come into play? Let's set the player's look to a default 5. We can use this number to influence the overall drop rate for rewards. If we reduce the drop rates for each reward in the array, and instead use the player's look to essentially roll multiple times for rewards, with a look of 5, rewards are rolled a maximum 5 times, or until a non-zero value is selected. Increasing the player's look stat increases how many times it rolls for rewards, increasing the chance for each reward. Now calculating this out, if we multiply together the percentage chance of not getting a reward for all look rolls, and then subtract that from 1, we get the percentage chance for a reward dropped. Divided by 3, we get the chance for each reward type. So 1% drop rates with 5 luck isn't exactly the same as 5% drop rates without luck, but it's close enough. I still have to tweak these values, so what I gave here was just an example of how the system works. Right now, I'm actually testing the game with about 
45% reward drop chance per room, and that seems to be working pretty good right now. If I'm going to get this demo ready, it's probably just going to be the first level, and maybe a small part of the hub area with two playable characters. If that's the case, then I kind of want to have the first level completely done so players can get an accurate sense of what's to come in the full game. A vertical slice. So this month I got to work on sprucing up the forest area. I think this new temple theme gives a bit more variety to level 1 and leaves some room for creative new enemy types. I still think I'll need to make another tile set for this level just for that extra bit of variation. And of course, heaps of different types of objects, decorations and foliage to fill out the space. There's a few more things I need to polish, not to mention work on menus and settings, but also enemy death animations and just new enemies in general. The last thing needed for a demo is some unique artifacts. I got to work on doing some of the final art for these. The full game will hopefully launch with a few hundred, but for the demo, I'm thinking maybe just 20 or so very unique ones. But more on that in the next video, because this video is over.